CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, we're going to teach you one way to check why your DVR is rebooting. And usually when your DVR reboots, there are two main reasons. One reason is you've set a rebooting schedule and it's rebooting. Or the other reason is a malfunction. There are two kinds of malfunctions that can happen. One malfunction is a hard drive malfunction, and that tells you whether your um, you know, hard drive has some errors. The best way to do that is actually go in the DVR hard drive section with the HDMI monitor connected to it. We have a separate video on how to do that and check the health of the hard drive. We're not going to show you that in this video. This, is, this video is about the second reason that you can have DVR rebooting, and it's because of your old cameras and your old cabling. Frequently, we encounter a customer purchasing a new DVR from us, already having old cabling and cameras, and when they get the new DVR, all of a sudden they start seeing the DVR reboot, blaming it on the DVR. Well, guess what? It's not the DVR's fault. You've got old cable, most likely it's been chewed up by mice, or it's been torn, or due to weather, it's just you know been damaged somehow. It happens, and it happens more frequently than you think. Mice love low voltage wires. Um, if you look up some Google searches, you look up HVAC, you look up uh, low voltage wire, mice chewing on it, you'll find everybody complaining, oh, I was charged thousands of dollars to repair my AC or condenser outside because my mice chewed into it. Well, mice also come after security camera wire because it runs 12 volts DC, the same current that's inside of an AC compressor and or AC condenser outside, and they love chewing up on that wire. And it's a frequent need for maintenance that's needed, especially if you do not control rodents around your property. And even if you do, it'll still happen to you. It's happened to me. So that's why I know it exists. And I also know it exists because I've seen it happen to other customers. And the DVRs will show you what it looks like. And that's the goal of this video. So I'm going to show you what kind of issues, what, some of the issues you can expect. It's all variable depending on what kind of cameras you have, how much voltage you're putting in, how much amperage you're putting in. But this is what happens to a DVR when you have old wire that's been damaged in some way, injecting voltage into the DVR. And when it does that, you will mess up your DVR over time and it will stop functioning properly. And no manufacturer's limited warranty against manufacturing defects covers you injecting current into your DVR. So watch this video carefully to learn how you can actually diagnose issues with DVRs that are happening as a result of poor wiring by looking simply at the logs and the videos that are coming back from your cameras. No fault of the DVR. It's your fault. You got to go maintain your wire. Make sure it's fixed before you mess up your DVR. So here I've entered the log of this particular DVR. You can enter the log also using a monitor connected directly to the DVR. In this case, I'm actually looking at a customer's DVR that's hundreds of thousands of miles away from where we are. And I look at it and all I see is video loss on different channels, tampering. The customer hasn't set up tampering. So when you see these kind of issues happening in the logs and they're going to be all random, no logic behind why it's happening, when it's happening, this is a telltale sign you have voltage being injected into the DVR because the DVR CPU is getting messed up as a result of or confused as a result of extra voltage coming in that should not be present and it's entering through the BNC lines, going to the motherboard and just messing it up. How would you, you think, would you be able to think clearly if someone is electrocuting you? Would you be able to work on a very complicated math, mathematics problem or reason? Of course not. And that's exactly what's happening with this DVR. You're causing it to mess up. Disconnect all your cameras immediately. Your cable, go check it. Rerun your cable. That's the best thing we can recommend. And use real RG59, not that thin pre-made wire that comes from a uh, pre-made uh, system that you buy from Costco. So here I pulled up different kinds of Siamese cable you can have. All this wire on the top, this is pre-made wire. And a lot of systems you buy from Costco, they'll have this thin wire. And look at this, it's so thin. This is, less th this is actually thinner than 26 gauge wire. You have wire like this, pre-made ends you didn't put on, well guess what? It's going to get chewed on and it'll stop working properly, even on its own sometimes as it gets heated up over time, it can actually fail because there's practically no copper in there, it's all aluminum, and this is cheaper pre-made wire. 
and this is what comes with kits. The professional wire to use in a CCTV system is something like this, where you have to put your own ends on it, and it's called RG59 Siamese. The copper conductor here is actually a 20 gauge, and the power is 18 gauge. There's a lot of plastic around the power, and uh, there's a braid around um, the, the video conductor. So there's very little chance for um, power to jump from here onto here in this kind of wire, unless you've stapled it or a wrap or a big mouse went through it. But mice love eating this power wire. And same thing here. Um, in this thin little wire, when you, all those pre are basically the same. They're so close to each other, there's not enough physical separation. Power will jump from the uh, power side if it's been exposed into the video, and bam, you've got continuity, and all sorts of stuff starts happening, such as this. So now I've established what kind of wire you want to look out for, and make sure you go inspect it most likely it's so hard if you have hundreds of feet of wire it's better to just replace the wire and here's the issue you'll see all these sorts of error logs so I'll pick a, a time in here that I'm gonna go back and show you some video of what you can potentially see it's all variable again you'll have different kinds of things happening so let me look at that so I'm logged into the DVR I'm going to go and look at around 609 I'm gonna go back into playback recorded video and this is what I see. I found a segment that uh, should never happen on a DVR. You see this black line going through on the left-hand side. What's happening is the processing unit is rolling over on itself because it's got current going into it. Whenever I see this telltale sign, you've got a voltage injection happening. And then when you see all these sorts of weird lights happening in the video, I'm going to play it these high contrast areas or different colors going through the video or lines going through the video, voltage injection. And sometimes it can present itself, sometimes it won't. It depends on how often it's happening. Happening Sometimes it's cyclical. But when you have some things like this happening in your video, this is basically duplication of the video channel on itself. And sometimes you'll even see one channel duplicating onto other empty channels or even occupied channels. These are classic telltale signs. You have voltage injection, and this will, over time, damage your DVR. It can happen in a matter of weeks, months, or even days in certain cases. So if you have an old system that you've had around, you've been thinking it's working well for you, and all of a sudden you get a new DVR, and you think it's the DVR's fault, well, guess what? It's not. It's your old cable, your old cameras. I'm just going to jump through different times in this video. Let's see if it ever goes away. Well, I'm taking a look at this. Doesn't go away at all. Look at these areas. It could just be the sensor getting really fried out on its own, sending out voltage itself as well, or the cable. What we recommend is you disconnect cameras that are causing such issues and you run the DVR without any cameras for a while and see if it reboots at all for a couple of days by going into the logs. And if it doesn't, then you know it's not the DVR because it would reboot if it did and uh, had an issue with the DVR itself. And with no cameras connected, if the DVR is not rebooting, then it's not your DVR, it's your cameras. Um, I'm just poking through. So here's the same channel. I found a day and time where I don't see any duplications happening here. So when you have that extra line coming in, it's the beginning of the end. You're causing your DVR's processor to go out. So now the DVR's, I can see here on this timeline, it's going to lose video right around this time. And let's see if we can find anything happening there. So if you see breaks in your recorded video happening randomly and it's not your reboot schedule, telltale sign, you're, you're overloading the DVR with voltage that shouldn't be present on there coming down through the BNC line, please change your cable. It shouldn't be happening. These cameras are really old. They're old, look like CMOS cameras, the cheapest ever any Chinese factory ever made because you see dancing uh, things inside the bushes. There's no clarity to them. 
You also don't have the, you know, this particular camera is not even mounted correctly. The IR is uh, just kind of getting blocked by these bushes or trees, whatever they are. I'll try to see if I can find some other video, but see, I don't see that duplication happening here. So if it was happening, not happening before, but then happening later, then you're basically, sh sh you know, that's what we tell you. You're going to, when you see issues like that, those lines appearing later, they weren't there before, you're continuously injecting voltage and you will mess up your DVR. So if you have this happening on your DVR, please do yourself a favor, go disconnect the cameras and go redo your cabling. A cabling tester will not help you. It will basically just tell you, yeah, you've got current going from one side to another, but it will not help you at all. Uh, you have to redo the cable. That's the only way. And get yourself a roll of cable because that last f uh, actual roll of RG59, it's more sturdy. See, I, got to, I see on this channel, there's lots of different reboots happening here. Again, What I, you'll also notice is that I don't see, I, I, in this particular channel, we didn't see any video breaks. I'll zoom out one more time and show you, but um, there are no video breaks happening during daytime. So what happens with security cameras is during daytime, they consume less power because there's no infrared like here. So infrared draws more power and when it's drawing more power, I see one, two, three breaks happening. Again, you might not see any, you might see several or many more. It all depends on how much amperage is being in injected. And especially if you're using a power supply with a power splitter on it, I'll show you in a second what that looks like. That doesn't distribute voltage evenly. Cameras fight for it. So some cameras might, you know, cause the DVR to trigger as well. But here in the daytime, they don't, the IRs are not on. They're not consuming that much power. So you don't see those reboots happening, but at nighttime you do. And it's a result of you injecting more current. Uh, it's basically you're sapping current from the power supply into the wire and it's going actually back into the DVR and it's causing more issues at nighttime. And over time, unfortunately, this will damage your DVR. Uh, let me tell you, let me show you what a cable splitter looks like. So I already showed you what a pre-made wire looks like. So when you buy kits from uh, big box stores, Lorax, Night Owl, Swan, Amcrast, everybody's trying to save money in selling you stuff. And what they do is instead of selling you an actual power box in a kit, they give you this power supply. And along with the power supply, they'll give you a power splitter. Let me show you what that power splitter looks like. And this is what a power splitter looks like. You can have a one to four or a one to eight. Unfortunately, they don't distribute power evenly because all they're doing is taking 12 volts and just splitting it. So the amperage doesn't get split properly. So when you try to go back and diagnose issues, they're all going to be random. These lines you see on the, on the right hand side in your video, they're just going to be random places. No logic to it. Unfortunately, again, power. So what's happening is the cameras at nighttime draw more power. The power supply here sends it through this connector, goes into all of these, goes into the camera. Well, when it gets towards somewhere in your cable along the lines, it jumps from the power to the video wire. It's electricity will flow either way in this case and it'll go back into the DVR and cause your DVR to malfunction more and more at nighttime more amperage more voltage more issues clear indication of you have a voltage injection problem going on on this DVR this is one way of seeing this sometimes it can be so bad you'll see kind of vertical lines or horizontal lines or scrolling lines that's another telltale sign but I hope this video educates you as a consumer if you have a big box camera uh, system and you've recently replaced your DVR and you're having all sorts of reboot issues, listen to the people you purchased them from. Most likely it's just your cheap system you bought because they gave you cheap wiring, cheap power supplies, your mouse is aided or the wires just degraded over time and it needs replacement. Unfortunately, there's nothing the DVR can do to help you out and unfortunately you're damaging your DVR. Fix your cable as soon as you can before you damage your DVR and save yourself some money. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.